Hi, my name is Joe Fiore with Blue Marble Consulting. Today I'd like to show you SAP predictive analytics on HANA for the retail industry. We're going to take a look at three different things today, uh, market basket analysis, customer loyalty, and store clustering. So first we will connect to our market basket analysis data set by connecting to the HANA server. And market basket analysis uh, is important because we can see um, which goods are sold together within the same transaction or to the same customer. So what we'll do now is click on the predict tab. And as you can see, we have an analytic model already set up here. So we'll go ahead and run that and take a look at the result. As you can see here, we have some filters here on the right hand side. So first let's take a look at data for all days. And we'll take a look at an association chart view of this data. As you can see here, um, our items sold together for all days are popcorn and soda, chips and soda, uh, popcorn and chips, all these items here. Let's go ahead and take a look at just weekday data and see what items are sold together um, on weekdays. So here we can see our weekday uh, spending is quite a bit different. People are buying a lot of women's clothing. So we can see, for instance, the short sleeve v-neck and the denim shirt are being purchased together uh, same way with the boot cut jeans and the straight cut jeans but now let's take a look at just our weekend sales data and see how that compares as you can see here uh, weekend spending is quite a bit different we see popcorn and soda being purchased together uh, as well as popcorn and beer so what we've done here is taken a large volume of data and quickly processed that data. And we can now take a look at the uh, market basket trends that are apparent in that data. Next, let's take a look at customer loyalty. Once again, we're going to connect to our data set on the HANA server. And a customer loyalty, loyalty analysis um, is important because we can see uh, we can identify customers based on their buying pattern and then cluster them into different loyalty programs. So once again, we'll go to our predict tab and we have our model already set up. So we'll go ahead and run this model and take a look at the results. And once again, we have uh, different filters here on the right hand side. So let's take a look at uh, clustering customer and review period and take a look at a um, visual view, a chart view of that. We can see here we have our clusters and our cluster size. We have some different charts we can take a look at here, um, several options. We can also take a look here at total sales and frequencies and we can compare one cluster with all clusters. We can also take a look at a number of different views for our data. Let's go to the visualize tab here. And here we'll take a look at total sales and items purchased by cluster number. And here we can see both total sales and items purchased uh, for each of our four clusters. We can also um, add additional measures such as customer period. So we can add that here if we wanna get a different view of our data. But now let's take a look at customer loyalty as well by adding loyalty points to our data here. And so in addition to cluster number, we're also going to take a look at uh, customer ID as well. And to do this, we're going to change from our clustering customer and review period into our uh, customer last year filter. And so from here, what we're going to do is take uh, total sales and loyalty points and look at that by customer ID. We can also change this data view to a column chart. And so what we can see here is total sales and loyalty points uh, by customer ID. So what we can do here is run this report and then run it um, later. We're seeing data for last year now. 
Um, and we, need, we can then compare this data to the same report at a later date, the same visualization, and then we can get insight um, to the uh, customer data and how that's changed between this view and our next um, run of the same data. We could also add cluster again, and we could see a movement between clusters for different customer IDs. Finally, we can take a look at anomaly detection, and that gives us an idea of uh, any outliers we may have in our data. So we'll go ahead and add outliers detected to our data here. And here we see customers uh, and loyalty points grouped into different clusters, uh, and some customers are detected here as outliers. So once again, we've taken a large volume of data and been able to not only run a predictive model for this data, but also uh, run a different, a different uh, visualization of the data so we can easily take a look at different measures. So now let's take a look at store clustering. And what store clustering is, uh, is segmenting stores based on the amount of purchases made per store. So once again, we'll connect to the HANA server to take a look at our data set. And same thing here, we'll go to the predict tab and we'll see we already have uh, an analytical model set up for us. So we'll go ahead and run our model and take a look at the results. We have a couple different options here on the right. We have all KPIs and partial KPIs. So we'll take a look at all KPIs first and we'll take a look at a chart view of this. So we can see here, see here we have uh, cluster size um, in each of our clusters here. And we'll go ahead and take a look at another view of this data too. And we can see here frequencies and gross sales uh, by clusters. We can compare clusters to each other here in this uh, view as well. But now let's take a look here at the Visualize tab and get a different view of our data. So here we see uh, gross sales and quantity by cluster number. What we can also do here is add store name as well. So here we can break our data down even further. We can see for each store, the gross sales amount and quantity by cluster number as well. And we can easily change to our um, partial KPIs or all KPIs, but we can also um, have a different visualization of each of those. So let's take a look at a pie chart view. Let's say we want to take a look here at um, gross sales by cluster number. So here we can easily see gross sales by cluster number. We can add any variety of um, measures to this. So now let's look at another view of our data. We'll go back to our bar chart and we'll take a look at uh, gross sales and sales quantity. And we will take a look uh, at this data by store name. And so we can see here yet another view of our data where we're showing gross sales amount and quantity by cluster number and store name. And we can also see the sales figures here. But as you can see, um, using this tool, we can not only uh, predict um, future measures based on previous trends, but we can also slice and dice data uh, in a number of different ways. If you would like to see how this solution can be used to help your business, please contact Sabrina Sigourney at Blue Marble Consulting at either of these two contact numbers or check out our website at simple-sap.com. Thank you.